Kevin Kinyo Mutambi. I am from a group called Jenga Kenya. We started way back in 2013. And the dream of a better Kenya and a better future is what made my friend and I start this thing. I had, I had the idea, I told him, and he had the name immediately. And so we started. Um, my name is Ian Mutethia Kinyo, the co-founder of Jenga Kenya. We started off with my friend Kevin Kinyo. Uh, he's my, we were with him in high school. So one day he called me and invited me to his home. So he told me he had something for me. So I went to him. He, he, he came with a notebook actually. I read the notebook. He had several ideas. They all jangled up in different, um, different ideas that weren't really concrete. Then he asked me what, what he, 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 he thought, uh, what I thought the, the idea would be in future once it, it's been made a whole, a whole some concrete project. So he had a problem of not having a name. So he asked me for, for a name. Came in immediately. I thought about it, looked at what the, the steps that he wanted me to, to, to go through and what his thought process what was all about. Immediately it came to my head. It was very clear. We needed to build Kenya. That's the name Jenga Kenya. My name is Phyllis Gadoni Kuria. I'm the events organizer of Jenga Kenya. Um, Jenga Kenya is a combination of friends. We are all friends from church, the same youth group, and we decided we'd like to make a difference. Uh, in our area of Ngong, so that's when we came up with the, with the name Jenga Kenya. We've been planting trees uh, in different areas and also we want to make a difference and touch a child's heart. What inspired us mostly is that dream of wanting our children and our younger siblings to have a better Kenya than we found it as. And therefore we went on to do many more projects we did a project on peace in 2013, uh, in which we had a debate in Jomo Kenyatta University, together with, uh, with the Jomo Kenyatta Model United Nations. After that, we had a Rise Up for Peace event at Strathmore University, which we partnered with the Strathmore ISEC group. From there, we have also done a talk on tribalism, which was actually very enlightening, as the youth participated and uh, so many people shared their views and ideas and how we can solve this thing. Apart from building people's lives, I believe we've also built ourselves as people in that we've been able to interact with several people in different aspects of life. In that first, during the Peace Campaign project, we were able to talk to different people and see their views about how our leadership was being taken in the country and the things that are being done right and being done wrong. When you talk to several people, you notice that there's this general feeling that people want the, the, the general good of everyone else and that these leaders are just there to, to just politicize that for their own good. So we decided to take up that project, did it to our best, I believe. Uh, we gave mentorship programs to people, we showed them videos. Then we also, we also took a few pictures. The, the height of the event for me was when we released balloons. Uh, we had black, red, green and white balloons at the end of the event where everyone had a sense of belonging. Uh, from then on it's when we started uh, now, we, we realized climate change is here and uh, people, people are spending too much time on their digital environment instead of their physical environment. Uh, technology is there, it is an advancement of uh, communication. Uh, the basic thing where you wake up early in the morning, you get out of your hut, you take your walking stick, and you take uh, two days and three nights to reach your friend on the other side so that you can say hi. So we should not forget that that's where we have come from. Technology will always evolve because that is, that is in us, that is in humanity. Humanity always has to be creative, making work easier. But you should also keep in touch with our physical environment, for that is our home. My name is Gita Murumba. I'm a student at uh, Jomo Kenyatta University. Uh, um, I'm a photographer for Jenga Kenya, and I'm the social, social media uh, coordinator. Uh, Jenga Kenya attracted me when they did a project regarding planting trees. I'm particularly passionate about the environment, and uh, they drew me 
they drew close to me when I could see friends and people that I know close to me uh, taking an initiative to take care of the environment and try to make Kenya a better place by planting a tree, one tree at a time. We are helping people not only to think that they need others to help them, but we want them to develop an attitude of they can make a difference by themselves and change a place or a community. And also again, the love of our country, we want to make it a better place and a better home for everyone. To me, it fulfills me in that I feel, I feel like I'm, doing, I'm giving back to the community, not just always taking something from the community. As friends, maybe I didn't know what one's capability, but with this, it has, it has helped us to know what one can do and their strengths, their weaknesses, and we are incorporating everything to make Jenga Kenya a big brand. Right now we have a project called A Million for a Million, uh, which, under which we are running the One Million Trees Challenge. Uh, we plan to grow one million trees over the next five years. And we don't just want to plant trees, we want to grow trees. And uh, if you visit our YouTube channel, you can see some of the work we've done. Uh, we've involved a, a variety of people, not just the youth. We've gone to the young people and the old people. <laughs> Bariki kazi yetu ya kupanda tunatumia mbegu iliyobarikiwa na kanisa kwa jina lako atutatumia dawa nyingine maana tuamini baraka yako wewe ulie mwenyezi na baba yetu mwema kwa jina la baba na la mwana na la roho mtakatifu So, so far we've been getting well wishers and sponsors to buy us tree seedlings. Uh, we've also been going to venues such as schools, churches. Uh, we've also been to forests. We've been to Ololua Forest. We've been to Ngong Forest. <laughs> The response has been good. People have come in and helped the way that we expected them to help and others are really looking forward for events. They want us to have more events like every weekend so that they can participate and they give feedback of what they want us to do. We generally do, we want to incorporate anyone. If you are a youth and you want to plant a tree, you just come. If you want to sponsor us by buying a tree seedling, you can buy a tree seedling. Uh, the Kenya Forest Service is selling to us at a subsidized price through the Angong office, over 15 shillings a, a tree seedling. So you can buy us, uh, we'll plant your tree seedling and we'll document it and we'll make sure that your tree grows to be a big tree. Our future expectations first, we want to uh, incorporate big corporates uh, and also different universities in Kenya. We also have an initiative called Donita Pea where we want to change small children's lives so with their help it will be it will be great we'll make a difference helping one generation to the other climate change as we are seeing it and deforestation is not really the problem it is rather a symptom of the problem our society has become a, has taken the throwaway culture where basically you get a paper you just throw it away uh, you get anything you just throw it away you never really Use, you never really conserve. And as a result, that's why our home 
which is Mother Earth and Nature, is currently in the state which we are in. The project has uh, helped me meet different kinds of people, people who share the same idea and same cause of uh, trying to make Kenya a better place, people who are driven by what they can do by themselves rather than what they expect others, other people, especially leaders and other grown-ups to do for them, people that are, have uh, self-conscious about themselves and what they want Kenya to be like. It has helped me network with them and uh, share out some ideas of a better Kenya and a better uh, youth generation. Start from where you are. Start from your own local community, from yourself actually. Do your best in whatever aspect you think you're good at. That's enough. If you're a leader, be a good leader. If you're a peace laureate, be a good peace laureate. Do your best at the smallest level that you possibly can. Many people nowadays do not even take care of their neighbors. They do not know who their neighbors are. Uh, you find a small child in the street, anakuja anakuuliza ndizi, lakini yauta mpea ndizi. Unampita tu na muigno. So this is the, actually the problem. We have to start taking care of each other. Because by taking care of each other, we are going to take care of the environment. As nature is where we were made, we were made to come and dwell in. God created us to take care of nature. There's a point where Jesus said that, gave the parable about the vineyard. And he talked about uh, the, so some people, some guy who had a vineyard, he went, fenced it, and grew vines. And then he gave people to take care of it. And he sent uh, people to come and uh, take, he sent people to come and look at the produce, at the harvest. And every, every person he sent, they were killed until finally he sent his only son and he was killed. In the teaching, he says that this place is just like that vineyard. God has made it and he's given us to be here and to be his custodians. So it is our responsibility to take care of it properly and to make sure that when God comes back, he's going to be proud of the work that we have done with it. What I can tell the ladies out there, it's not up to the men to predict what they want us to do you have to come forward. We have great minds, great ideas. We are creative. That's why we are left with the responsibilities of doing arrangements and house and taking care of the kids. So imagine how you take up a responsibility in the house as a mother and as a lady. It's the same way you should come forward and take that responsibility of making a difference. It's not up to you to be told or don't wait and be told that you can make a difference. You have to tell yourself so that it can come out greatly and if we have so many ladies doing that, we'll have a different society in Kenya. First, uh, thank God for the Father that has brought us and hope that we, we might be able to accomplish many other more projects by first finishing this project uh, that we are currently doing, which is one million trees. Currently, we've done 2,433. We have different challenges, which is very true, but uh, the problems can be overcome, and hence building our country, Jenga Kenya. We want this initiative to be taken up by others, many generations, to make an impact in someone's life and in a country's life. Uh, my biggest challenge to them is to stop complaining because what, what you can, you, wherever you are, you can start something and make the world a better place, especially Kenya, from where you are seated, from where you are standing. Change, change the small things around you and uh, when you take that challenge up, many people will join you in that quest of changing small things and in the end, you will get the change that you want to be. The situation which we are in right now is a, resu a result of our predecessors. Walo aliokuwa mbele yetu walituletea mazuri mengi na pia mabaya mengine. Lakini tutaacha watoto wetu waseme wale walikuwa mbele yao waliharibu na wao pia hawakufanya kitu chochote ndio sababu tuko hapa. Hapana watoto wetu watasema wale walikuwa mbele yao waliharibu lakini wao walikuwa na nafasi ya kutengeneza na wakatengeneza. Kuso it is our time. It's our turn to lead and it's our turn to do the right thing. We are, we are Jenga, Jenga Kenya. Kenya. You're, You're watching MBCI TV. We are calling on you to, to build Kenya. Kenya. <laughs> <laughs>
Kadia. I am 22 years now and I'm a student at this university. I study economics. I grew up in, okay, now I live in Gong, but I was born in Kisumu. And I have a son who's one year and seven months. I started an initiative called Amira Africa that usually deals with the encouragement, elevation and support of young mothers in Kenya and also across Africa. So what we do is we put them in support groups and there's a mentorship program where we link the mothers who are pregnant now currently and the ones who already gave birth now like myself. So usually they just take them through the whole journey, they work with them, they answer some of the questions they might have, they encourage them to do ABCD. It's just mostly to make sure that they have that emotional support that they require. And once in a while we do events whereby now the women come together and have a bonding session. I'm Sally, I grew up in South Bay, I'm 21 years old. I go to University of Nairobi, third year doing economics and statistics. Um, I got pregnant when I was 20. Yeah, then I turned 21, just before I got her. Amira Africa, I just found out about it through Facebook. I just saw a page talking about something to do with young mothers, so I decided to inbox the owner of the page, which is Fiona. Then she inboxed me and just started talking. Then I went to the blog, I read all the other stories that were really inspiring. And they helped me like, I could see there are people out there dealing with the same things I'm dealing with. So we formed a WhatsApp group and from there I got to learn more about it and know about the functions and how they meet up and all of that. First of all, when I got pregnant at 20, then the journey, like I understood what most ladies go through at that period. So like there's a lot of emotional turmoil that most people don't really see. Like they just see a lady walking around pregnant and then there's a social stigma. Like I understood the journey more and then I decided because I was looking for such a platform and which I couldn't find. The ones that I, I found, I didn't really like how they were managing their initiatives or organizations. So I decided how about I create one whereby now this ladies can come because also for me it was a healing process like I needed people who understand me people who are actually in that journey as I am. Uh, my name is Wamboi Mbogwa I'm 22 years old with a three week old baby I'm in school doing BCom in my last year in university in KU BCom marketing I've got to meet so many people through Amira Africa I've had the best support system that I think I've ever imagined. But it's good because I've gotten so much, I've gotten to know so many people, the love and support that's from my friends, from my family, from my parents. The people I was really scared of telling them that I was pregnant, but eventually they opened their heart and their love to me, which was amazing. Usually they, they contact us via email or my number. And then um, we get to understand the background first, like what they've passed through so far. And then now from that, I, I choose, okay, I have a team of mentors who do that. There are about seven women. So I choose the one whose journey is closer to that lady. And then now I link them up together. Then now from there, she takes over. She talks to the lady, she, she helps her in whatever. Like if she has any question, the lady will answer. The reason why some people, the men would run away, I think in my opinion is fear. Because some of them would, um, for a lady, they can't run away from being pregnant, but for the man, they can go away and come back as they please. Which is really unfair because we are the ones who are left being looked at in the society, like we are the ones who did wrong, like they should be banned from the society. But yet children are a blessing from God. and. For some people, from some women, they'd feel really emotional until they go and abort the child because they don't feel like they're ready because the fear and the pressure is usually, usually so much that they can't deal at that time. And yet, if you pass through that stage of knowing what you want and you're going to go with this decision of keeping the baby, just do it with your all. 
society will just pin, pin it on you instead of actually supporting you in that journey because already first of all you're feeling like okay for, like myself i feel that i disappointed myself my my parents and now what will become of me so the least that people around me would have done is support me you have to learn to be patient with yourself and with other people in the society it builds your self confidence and you will have to grow up and make decisions. You forgive them for whatever they've done or not done or they've looked at you badly. Rely on God and your strength because that's mainly where you're going to get your strength from. And not really listen to what anyone negative has to say. If nobody is building you or helping you, just do away with them and just surround yourself with positive people who will encourage you. And believe in your strength because you're just going to make it eventually. Also. Forgiveness, I just learned that forgiveness isn't about whether the person has apologized because there are many people you may feel have wronged you, how they treated you, how they spoke to you. But you just forgive them so you can move on with your life. And you just feel free after that. So far, actually that was one of the things we wanted to do when now we turn one year. Because I also thought prevention would be better than cure. Like how about if these people actually knew what they could get into. Like, being a young mother is not so easy, more so when now you're doing it alone because the guy doesn't want to take responsibility. So if people understood that, then I don't think they would want to be in that situation. The society needs to learn to love despite the situations that someone is going through. Because when someone is going through a difficult situation, that's when you need the other people to help you through that journey. On my website, um, we put um, different issues that young mothers face and then just, just tips on motherhood. And also now I added a personal segment on now my story, like the whole journey, which I'm still writing slowly, slowly. The unexpected things that happen in your life changes the direction that your life will go to. But you have to stick to, your, stick to that direction and be passionate about it. If you're not passionate about it, of course things would happen the way you would want it to be happen. But if you're passionate and you love what you're going to go to the next part of your life, you have to do it with your all. Yeah. It's going to be a right in the end. If it's not a right, it's not the end. I usually tell people, every human being is going through temptations and trials and different things, yeah? So it's not in our capacity as another human being to judge them. Like that's the least thing that any human being deserves. So just accept people how they are because everyone has their own battles at the end of the day.